So we're going to go win some, some SmackDown right now. Okay? Event against a pretty, uh, pretty tough opponent here, which is this nonlinear ODE, boundary value problem. So let's come over here. All right, we'll go back here. I will no longer hide the projector. Perfect. Okay, so let me uh, kill this and let's come back to here. And we have basically the same code as before. Now we're going to make some modifications. Let's start off with the easy things first. What's my right hand side look like now? Well, let's go over here and modify it. My right hand side isn't this anymore. My right hand side is y1 prime equals y2. That's still correct, so that's still fine. But now I have y2 prime is equal to, now it's going to become this equation over here, which is going to be this beta minus 100 times y1 plus y1 cubed. That's my right-hand side. Now, notice something here. Uh, beta. Minus. Minus. Whew. Minus. Whew. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, check it out. Does anybody know what beta is? This code doesn't. This code just says beta. I don't know what that is. So you better pass it in. Okay? Beta is a variable that's going to be passed around between these guys. Remember, these functions are trying to figure out what beta is as well, right? You don't know what it is. It doesn't know what it is, but it's going to go try to find it for you. Here's something interesting, by the way. Let's go back up to the board here real quick and just say the following comments. I have this equation, second order ODE, and I have to specify two things, right? Two things to nail this thing down. But wait a minute, what's this beta doing here? In the end, I have also beta that I don't know. Ultimately, what you have to do is you have to specify, if you want to get a solution out, you have to specify one more condition. Does that make sense? If I'm going to, if I have, so it's like I have three unknowns and two equations, so it's underdetermined. MATLAB will tell you, dude, I can't solve underdetermined systems because I don't know I mean there's an infinite number of solutions so what you have to do is make up a third constraint so that's what we're going to do I'm going to make up the following third constraint what I will do is say how about we do the following remember how we played around with launch angle at the left let's just do the following y prime at negative one is equal to one I'm making this up Yep, you need another constraint. It will determine if I pick this different, it'll change the beta. Yeah. So this is going to be a third constraint, which is y2 at negative 1 will be 1. Okay, this is just counting. How many ever things you got to pin down is how many ever constraints you got to give it. Okay? Yeah, I just made that up. I like numbers like one. Some people would pick something crazy. Well, that's a good question. What is it in real life? So in real life, uh, you could make a lot of arguments about what this might be. In real life, for instance, if you're solving this, a lot of times what people want out of this, this is actually a nonlinear eigenvalue problem. And what people really want out of this thing is, I want you to get me a solution. And I want the solution so that when I integrate over y1, or y, over y, absolute value squared, and integrate over x, that that thing's 1. In other words, it's normalized. And then it cares a great deal about what that number is. But this is typically what people do. It's like, OK, in the nonlinear system, I actually have an infinite number of solutions because I, I get to specify this. But how about you give me the one that has that normalization? Why do they do this? In quantum mechanics, they do this a lot because this is a probability density, and you want that to be 1. Okay? And so that's sort of a physical constraint on this, not this. But then you have to pick this right to make this work. And by the way, that's what you're going to do in homework, too. OK? 
Okay? All right, so the reason I say this is because right now, this function call here, which is the right-hand side of your equation, doesn't seem to care about this issue yet. But certainly, when you come to your boundaries, it does care quite a bit. So let's talk about what are the boundaries I'm going to assume here, because this is going to be the key. I've got to now assume three boundaries. So for instance, if I do this, the left first component of the left vector is zero. That's, that's that condition right there. Okay, so another one, that's, hey, y negative one is zero, I got it. I also have at the right, the first component is zero. That's the other boundary condition. So y plus or minus one equals zero is encapsulated in these two right there. The next one I need though is this derivative, which I'm gonna do the following. The left, at the left point, the second component, which is the derivative, is equal to, or minus one, is equal to zero. So in other words, that's just saying that the derivative of the left is one. Remember, you always state it, it's like Jeopardy, right? You have to rewrite, the, you state your answer in the form of a question. This is kind of the same thing. You state your boundary in the form of an equal zero thing, okay? Everybody good with that? There you go, three constraints. Save. Oh, oh, don't forget to pass in beta. Okay, save. This, did I save it? Save? Yes. That's all right. Still got to pass it around. Everybody needs a little bit of beta. Beta is this thing that goes around to everybody. And by the way, you could have beta in here, right? You could, in fact, have it that beta was in the boundary condition itself. So you would need it there if you need to pass it in. But again, in the, just like the previous case, it may not show up. So you may go like, well, I'm not using it, but you still pass it in. So let's talk about this part here, because this is actually now becoming pretty important. So let's, let's start from here down. So first, when I get my answers, let's assume I can get some answers. I want to go from negative 1 to 1 and 100 points. And all this stuff follows through. It just says, you know what? Once I get the solution out, evaluate it at the 100 points, plot the solution for me. But now where it's different is that I have to, when I come into this, I'm going to have to do a little bit more careful planning on Anish. Okay, so first of all, BVP Anish, let's, uh, we're going to pick our initial points. And let's do the following. I know it's going to go from negative 1 to 1. And let's go ahead and pick more points, maybe 50 points. I don't know. Okay? Now, I want to do something fancier than guess zeros. I could guess zeros, but let's do something fancier. So let's, here's how you do something fancier. Uh, we're going to go call a function, bc init. Okay? And what this is going to be for us is going to be a function where we're going to give it an initial function profile. And I have to bring in beta here. Now, by the way, when I throw beta in here, it's important. Not only am I going to guess here what the solution might look like, I need a guess for beta. It's going to iterate on the solution. It's also going to get, iterate on your guess for beta. So remember, how would you guess beta? Now, uh, in class, here's, so, so you can't quite just throw away shooting, for instance, because what shooting helped us to do is kind of, hey, let me shoot across, see what this... We kind of got just a very, very basic idea of what, what solutions might even look like before we just start guessing wildly. And what we knew is, you know, beta had to be less than 100. And in fact, there were some solutions up there around 97, 96, right? So let's guess something like beta is 99. Okay? Because I knew up there somewhere there were solutions to the linear problem, and maybe if the nonlinear problem isn't too far off, maybe that's a good place to start. Okay? Remember, everything typically is going to rely on those two pieces of code. The rest are just cut and paste, put your stuff in. These two are critical because you're not only giving the guess for the parameter, in this function call right here, this bc init, you are actually telling it, 
I think the solution looks like this. Can you find a solution that looks like this? Okay? So let's build that one piece of code. File, new M file. That's going to be my input. Let's call this, what do they call it again? Uh, BC init, like that. Didn't I do that? Is that right? All right, let's hope I did that. All right, so now we're going to come into this initial call. Uh, and we're just sending an X. And what it's going to spit out are the Y values. Oh, I don't need it here. So my input is going to be the following. It's going to be a vector. Two components. The first component is my guess for Y1. The second component is my guess for Y2. Now, I'm going to make a guess based upon what we saw in class. Remember how, what the solutions look like for the linear case? The first solution, 99, just was like this that looked like that, looked like a cosine. Hey, why don't I guess a cosine? Okay, so let's guess a cosine. By the way, I want a cosine that hits 0 at 1 and minus 1, so I might do something like this, cosine pi, uh, pi over 2 times x. And then what should I guess for the derivative? Well, how about the derivative of this? That's kind of a nice guess. There you go. There are my guesses. So I'm going to guess something that looked like the linear case with betas 99, and I'm hoping that this might work. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Let's come back. So now I have everything in place. So this niche thing here. Let's talk about that. What it's going to do, it's going to bring in the, my initial guess for beta. It's going to go produce an initial function evaluated at 50 points initially between negative 1 and 1. I've already defined my boundary conditions right there at negative 1 and 1 since I put that in. And this BVP init goes and constructs this thing and figure out, figures out how to send it into Sol. So it puts it in a very special functional form, brings it in here, and then these guys keep operating on it. This operates on the equation. This operates on the boundary. It knows that beta is this parameter, and it tries to both change beta and iterate towards a solution with changing beta. Get you, can you try to get you a solution that's 10 to minus 6 accurate. And after you get it, you say, now I want to plot it. So you make a new vector, negative 1, 100 points. You use the deval to extract out how this thing is encoded in terms of information, plot it. Okay. Many betas What's that? You put in yeah. Many yeah. Betas. You can put in you can put in multiple parameters, a chain of them. It'll just take your code longer, but that's okay. You just have to give them guesses, and for every one you put in, extra constraint. Okay. Yes. Where does beta come out for? What's that? Does beta contain the result? Let's check it. I, I let me let's get the solution out and let's. Try to see if tell us what beta is. <laughs> I know you can get it. I, I actually didn't look at that actually, but we'll, we'll try it. So I think we're ready to go. We say go, and there's our solution. Yeah. So fully nonlinear solution. In fact, I'm going to do a couple things here. Watch what happens here. Let's make it really nonlinear. Okay, ten. So I'm going to really crank up the nonlinearity here. So uh, nonlinearity usually makes it very difficult for you to solve any kind of differential equation. Okay? Sometimes if it's a weak nonlinearity, you can often do perturbation theory. And you can say, let's kind of ignore it a little bit and then bring in corrections to it. But then when you do something drastic like that, oh, oh hold on. There it is. Whoa. Oh, look at that. Tease me a different solution. Okay, so yeah, that's a solution, but it's not really the one I wanted. By the way, how many solutions are to this problem? Infinity of them. Infinite number of solutions. So this is what's problematic. 
So now what I have here is a code that will give me this. And by the way, so notice that as I cranked up the nonlinearity, it gives me a different solution. But you know what I can do is I can also play around with this boundary condition. Instead of making it 1 on the left, remember that I launched with angle 1. Let me launch with angle 0 0.1. Let's see what happens now. Check that out. So you see, I launch at a little bit lower angle. This thing is the deformation of that cosine on that nonlinearity. And so you see, I, I, all I did was change this parameter I made up. Right? I said, well, let's just launch with angle 1. Well, if I launch with long 1 or point 0.1, I get different solutions out because, in fact, there's infinite number. Hopefully highlighting the fact that your initial guess is always the critical piece. All right, there you go, BVP4.